Hey everybody, testing out the audio. How do I sound? How is the background music? Is it too loud? Am I too loud? Let me know. Oh my gosh, good news everybody. Jimbo is going back into his throne. So we're going to transition to that. Ooh. Now my audio is being weird. Hold on, I gotta fix this. Music? Is it too loud? Am I too loud? Let me know. There we go. All right, I think I fixed that audio thing. Um, yeah, let me know how I sound. Oh, you can post emojis now. That's kind of cool. Sounds good, good to know. We'll just stare at Jimbo for a little bit and then we'll get going in just a second. All right. Ready, Jimbo? He's ready. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Fix that microphone. Hopefully, the I got the air conditioning on for like the first time in forever, so hopefully it's not blowing on the microphone 
Ooh, ooh, sorry. Too much. Um, because I think it is, but I don't know. All right. Well, anyhow. Hi, everybody. Happy almost Earth Day. Uh, it is... Today we are going to be crocheting a tiny planet Earth for Earth Day. This is our... This is one of our three Earth Day fundraiser live streams this year. Um, we'll be doing a bunch of different live streams throughout the year or throughout this month and uh, trying to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund to help protect uh, animals and nature. This is a, uh, a, a fundraiser that we've been doing every single year where we've been working with other amigurumi artists to uh, make a bunch of patterns. Well, you know what? Let's just change to the... No, 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 no. Let's talk this through. Uh... <laughs> hi, everybody. Hi, Becky. Hi, Leaf Sauce. Hi, Misty. I need some water. Um, okay, so today we're going to be crocheting a planet Earth as part of our Earth Day fundraiser. Every year we do a new fundraiser where we work with some amigurumi artists to create a few different uh, crochet patterns that are based on endangered animals uh, and you can donate to the World Wildlife Fund and receive those patterns as uh, a thank you for your donation now this year's patterns are not finished yet they're gonna be we're gonna be releasing them uh, one next week and one the week after um, this year we're it's me and Sir Pro Gray doing a pattern, but we have a bunch of other ones from previous years as well, and I'll show you those in just a second. If you would like to help support the World Wildlife Fund and help support um, endangered creatures all around the world, um, all you have to do is donate. If you hit that little heart, there's a little heart in the corner, um, you should be able to donate there. There's also a pinned comment at the top here. You can donate there. If you donate today um, on the YouTube video, you'll get the PDF for this planet Earth, which is also the first of our photosynthesis kit. Um, and it's a really cool uh, color change chart pattern. I think it's really neat. Uh, if you want to get more of the Earth Day patterns, just go to clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day. I put a link in the description. Uh, that is where you can find all the additional patterns for our Earth Day fundraisers that we've been doing throughout the years. Um, they are forever uh, fundraiser patterns, so they're always don donate to download. Any of the patterns that you find there, um, you can donate to the World Wildlife Fund to download the pattern. So, and it's forever. So if you don't want to do it today or you see one, you're like, you know what? I don't have time for that one just yet. You can come back to it later and donate to download and the, all the funds, 100% of the funds go to the World Wildlife Fund. So it's it's a for a good cause. We're crocheting for a good cause is the whole point. Let's switch to the camera and show you what we're doing today. How do I do this? I changed the system here. Ah, there we go. And we can also still look at our adorable cat. Now, I don't know why, but the chat is being the chat and it's not working. And I don't know why that's happening. I'm trying to fix it, but you know, it's just being a butt. Um, <laughs> Cooper, thank you so much for your donation. You know what we're gonna do today too? Every time you donate, I'm going to put something on screen. Let's see, can we do it in the background? I don't know if we have too much space in the background. We might add it to the cat cam, maybe, if we run out of space here. But I'll throw uh, one of the different endangered animals on screen for donations uh, until we run out of uh, things to put out. But, you know, that way, that way helps encourage donations because it's for a good cause, guys. Good for a good cause. Okay, so today we're going to be making... Uh, <laughs> Today we're going to be making our planet Earth, and this is our uh, Earth crochet uh, color chart pattern that I came out with. Um, I actually just updated it uh, yesterday on the website. You can find it by going to clubcrochet.com slash earth. There's a link on screen or in the description of this video. Um, and it's actually the first of our patterns. Well, it's not the first of our patterns, but it's one of the patterns in our giant photosynthesis crochet kit that just got released. Um, these are also available for pre-order and uh, you can get an annual pass and you get four of these kits. They're super cool. We just did a an unboxing the other week, but we're actually gonna start our kit today uh, it, by making our planet Earth. So let's go ahead and open up our kit. Um, oh wait, let's first get our endangered creature on screen for Philip here. 
Um, okay, so we have a bunch of different endangered species, endangered creatures that have been made by various Amigurumi artists. Let's start with uh, this adorable red panda from Lemon Yarn Creations from not last year, but the year before's Earth Day uh, fundraiser. And it's just so cute. And I remember this pattern was really cool because it had a lot of unique things about it. What One of the things I really like about this Earth Day fundraiser is I get to try out patterns from other artists and we all kind of challenge each other to try something new with crochet that we maybe haven't done before. Um, and in this pattern, our, our artist, artist Lemon Yarn Creations did this really cool thing with the tail to make this tail super easy to sew on. Uh, she ended up using this technique again in her pattern the next year for the uh, black footed ferret, which we'll be showing sooner rather than later. But we're gonna add this to the background for Cooper. Hopefully, I mean, they're barely in screen, but you know what we need? There we go, that's very cute. Okay, so that's going to be right there. Uh, if you'd like to donate, we will add more things to the screen for you. Uh, and let's get hooked. <laughs> Happy hooking. There we go. Perfect. These are our new seasonal crochet kits that are available for uh, pre-order now. Um, you can also get the annual kit, and you'll get a fancy little pin here. But, oh, I'm all, I'm all like, excited but, like, nervous to use it because, like, this is my only one. I'm going to have to have them send me another one. And I'm just... I don't know, I'm just excited to use it. So we are going to need our blue yarn today for our earth. We'll need our green yarn. Now you could use either green for your planet earth, but I'm gonna be using our forest green. And then we'll need our small bit of white yarn. Um, the majority of this white yarn is used for this pattern. So we're gonna need those things. What else? Oh, we'll need our keychain, which is beneath these as well. And we'll need our thread. There's our keychain. Um, I've already got my crochet hook. Uh, and then we'll need our eight millimeter eyes as well. So we'll go ahead and grab all the materials that we need for this pattern. Now there's gonna be patterns coming out for this kit all season long, all the way till July. We're gonna be coming out with new patterns for this that can be made with this kit. And again, annual pass seasonal kit available in the uh, description. Also. Cooper just put it in the comments, which is very nice of you, Cooper. Thank you. All right, we're going to put this to the side. And that way we can put everything back in it once we are done with today's pattern. It also acts as a um, a yarn holder, which is just kind of neat. Just kind of neat. Hi, Crochandro. How are you? You like the thumbnail, Becky? Thank you for enjoying the thumbnail. Okay, so I've done this pattern. I made this pattern quite a, quite a lot. And it's really, really cool for uh, for one very particular reason, and that is because it has a this really cool color change chart that I designed specifically for this pattern. Um, let me see if I can't get it show you kind of what it looks like. You know what? Here, I'll just take my iPad here and show you that way. Ooh, loud BDB. Uh oh, my mom's calling me. She knows we're in a live stream. What are you doing, mom? All right. <laughs> so here is the color change chart, just so you can get an idea of what we're working with today. And this pattern will go goes through like all the instructions on what how this color change chart works. Here is kind of some explanation for how the color change chart works. Uh, and I'm not going to go through detail about how how this color change wor chart works in this pattern, but. I just want to show you it's really cool. It's like super cool and makes crocheting this earth like extremely easy. Uh, I took a long time coming up with how this pattern works. Uh, but yeah, and it also includes little check marks so you can keep track of what rounds you've done. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to be using today. Again, if you want to donate to download this, uh, it's a really, really fun pattern. I guarantee you've never worked with a color change chart like this before unless you've made this pattern because I'm the one that designed it, and unless you've made this one, you haven't made anything like it before. And it's really cool. Um, Zoe asks, are the pins gonna be available separate from the kit? I love that cactus yarn pin. Uh, they may be available. I only ordered a limited amount for the kits, so if there are any left over, if not enough people um, get the annual pass, uh, by the end of the season, then I'll have some left over. But uh, as of right now, it's going to be a close call. 
Um, so yeah, if you want one, I would, if you really, really want one, I suggest signing up for the annual pass first, but, um, yeah, they might, they might be available. I'm going to try to get more made in the future so that I don't have to worry, like I can have them available after, uh, because next season's pin is so, so, so cute. It's under the sea themed and it's, it's just really like, I am super duper excited about next month's pin. Uh, we got it made and I was like, oh my God, this is one of the cutest pins I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. All right, all right. I'm gonna answer those questions soon. Uh, by the way, I see a lot of questions in there. Hi, Tina. Jack Gurgle says hi as well. And obviously Jimbo would say hi if he weren't fast asleep there. Uh, hi, Johnny. Welcome. All right, cool. Let's get hooking. Uh, oh, I'm so excited. Like, I'm, I'm like legitimately nervous to start start our <laughs> seasonal kit because like I've been working on this for so long and this is the only one that I have and I'm just like oh I'm just nervous okay but here here goes nothing we're gonna start with our white yarn I'm just gonna try to slide this off I don't think I can I think I'm gonna have to peel it off all right I guess yeah there we go Okay, so we're going to need our white yarn, and we're going to need our blue. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And our green. Oh, why am I so nervous? It's so silly. Such a silly thing to be nervous about, but I am. Uh, did I see the Mario movie? I did see the Mario movie. It was great. Okay, so let's put these to the side. We definitely won't need our other, uh, our, uh, what's this called? I'm gonna brain fart. Our black thread or our eyes just yet, and we definitely won't need our keychain just yet, so we'll just toss those to the side. And we're just gonna get started with our white yarn. If I can find the end of my white yarn. There it is. Okay. All right. Created a bit of a tangle. Uh, is the mystery pattern in the seasonal kit a little amigurumi greenhouse? Oh, what a great, great question, Ivy. It is not that, but that is a super good guess. Uh, I really think you're gonna like the last mystery pattern, but I'm telling you, uh, you're not gonna guess it. I, I will be shocked if someone guesses what it is. Okay. Oh my gosh, Cosmo saw the Mario movie in Italy. That's amazing. That is very cool. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm just really, I am. I'm just really excited. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to start with the poles here. We're going to start with the North Pole. As I'm going through this pattern, by the way, uh, we're going to be making, it, this is an anatomically, not anatomically, a geographically correct planet Earth. So as I go, shout out when I crochet your home, because I'll tell you when I'll be crocheting my home. Uh, it's, that's just kind of one of the fun parts about this pattern is you get to like actually see the whole Earth as you're making it. I just, I'm super proud of this pattern. I realized today that I came out with this in 2019. So it's been like Technically, it's been four years since this pattern's been out, and I've updated it twice. Uh, the newest update that I just put onto the site is probably going to be the final update. I did a whole new video tutorial that goes really, really slow, just in case. Uh, and yeah, so I put in a lot of effort into this update. So I don't think we'll be updating it again too soon. Should I be using, should I use a stitch marker for this, this time? Or should we just go for it? Let's just go for it. Let's just, let's be wild and crazy kids. Uh, one of the things I really, really like about these new seasonal kits is this yarn that we're using. This is the new Club Crochet branded Amigurumi cotton yarn that I got made. And it is so unique as a cotton yarn. It's just like, it's all, Hard to explain, but it's like really dense. It's like a very dense cotton. Um, 
because it's made out of like so this is like four, four ply yarn which basically means that it's four strands woven together but every one of the plies of the yarn is also like eight strands wound together you kind of see it there and it just makes it super duper dense it holds its shape really really well and it's very strong yarn i i just love it it's i when i first got this yarn i thought like man this is very different than the yarn i use i mean it's not really it's like it's a very subtle difference um but i thought like oh, i don't know if i'm gonna like this and then i made a i think i started by making a triceratops just to like see how it went and i was like whoa this yarn is super cool like it's so much easier to use it makes your pieces look so crisp like look at all the stitches anyhow i'm gonna stop uh raving about this amazing yarn uh even though it is amazing yarn um is this a clover hook no it's not actually this is a this is our club crochet hooks um i got these made specifically for the kits uh, and I really like this hook with this yarn too because it really like you can see how See how clear that hook like angle is. Let me see if I can show you. I think I have a clover hook somewhere I do love clover crochet hooks um, They're one of my top favorites uh, But here you can kind of see the difference of these two hooks right there. Let me see if I can get closer It's very subtle, but this one the new one here the club crochet one has a very like indented hook which lets you like really hook onto the yarn now it can be a this hook can be a little bit of an issue if you have yarn that's easy to accidentally thread so if you're using like bamboo yarn or something because the hook is very pointy at the end it's easy to hook onto like a thread that has like a lot of things but it actually makes it really really useful when you have yarn that is good uh, that doesn't not that threading yarn isn't good but like yarn that doesn't uh thread as easily it makes it actually way better because it's easier to hook and scoop through the stitches like for this yarn i just thought this was the perfect hook for the yarn at hand uh and yeah thanks for the question though good question yes i am also practically swimming in yarn bunny but i've actually gone through all of my club crochet yarn so this is the end of this is all that i have right now i'm still waiting for more to ship to me um because the when the kits are available for shipping uh is when the pre-orders go like are completed that actually is like the beginning of the yarn so this is like my test kit basically so i'm kind of using my test kit i probably shouldn't be but They'll send me another one, right? It's my yarn. <laughs> okay. Um, let's keep on going. Oh, we lost Jimbo. What a bummer. Okay, we're going to switch to our blue here. And we also should probably grab our green yarn because we're going to need that as well. Uh, we won't need our white yarn for a little bit, so I think that'll be good. Next stitch here, place your green yarn and pull through with blue. Okay, now I'm not, I, like I said before, I'm not going through all the stitches in this tutorial because I just did that in a whole new video tutorial that I made specifically for this earth that you can find at clubcrochet.com slash earth. So I don't really think I need to do that again in this live stream. I'd rather just hang out with you, talk to the live stream and try to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund. And fix our little little fella here Boop. yeah he I think he's just laying yeah he's just laying right under the camera uh oh we've we've interrupted his slumber which is never a good thing never a good thing at all what's gonna be cool here is you're gonna see how easy this pattern can be to make to hook up with the color chart because I'm gonna be able to talk to you the entire time that I'm making it, which should be a lot of fun. I'm gonna try to, like usually I work around the yarn the entire time I'm like making it. So I'm just like continuously working around and using the, um, and crocheting like around the yarn. Let's see, I kind of want it to get a little darker there. So you can see the stitches maybe a little bit better. Actually. Yeah, all right, it's fine. Man, 
why isn't that chat working? It's so frustrating to me. Because it's like, I've tried to fix it so many times now. You don't know, Jimbo. Uh-oh. Hi. Hello. I know. I know, I know, you are a cat. That is definitely true. Okay. Let's keep on crocheting on. I take it back. I'm going to work around the yarn because it'll be a little easier. Hey, buddy. Did you just have like a bad nightmare or something? Or do you just want attention? Yes, we have definitely. This chaos. Oh my god, he fell asleep on the monomo. It's so cute. I wonder if you can see it. Here we go. I'm going to try and hopefully fix this camera if we can't see him. You see him? He's right pointing directly at him right there. Ah, you can't see him. Bummer. Wish he could. He's extremely cute. <laughs> All right. Zoe says their high school best friend contacted you the other day and she wants to get into crochet and wants to know where to start. So you sent her to crocheting 101. That's dope. Literally, that was like the whole point of crocheting 101 when I made it. It was like, I want something that I can just send to my friends when everybody says like, hey, how do I crochet? I can just be like, here, crocheting101.com, just go for it. So it's so cool to know that it's like actually being used like that. Very neat, very neat indeed. We're already just about done with our first round. And there's only 13, or our third round actually. There's only 13 rounds of this too, so it's very quick to make. I have a feeling we're gonna be, we're gonna have some time to work on something else after this, um, after this earth. So if you got any ideas of something you'd like me to crochet, uh, we totally can in this video. Maybe we can even do a small design along. Maybe we can do a bonimal. Um, I don't know. Especially if we raise a little bit more money, I'll, I'll definitely be down to do something, <laughs> something different. Since we are trying to raise money for charity today. Um, other ways you can donate, by the way, you don't have to donate by clicking, uh, by donating here on YouTube. You can donate directly to the World Wildlife Fund and send me uh, the receipt of like what you've donated and I'll make sure to get you one of the many patterns, uh, whichever one you request. And then you can also donate on the website to download all the patterns. So there's a bunch of different ways to donate to download and get access to a bunch of different patterns and help protect our planet. There we go. All right. Did I make anybody's home yet? It's kind of hard to tell here, but we've made that's Alaska right here. This is Canada, top of Canada. Right there, I think that's Maine. And then over here we have, this is all Russia. Here we have like, like all of Northern Europe. So I think this is like England right here. This might be Greenland right there. So we might've made your home already. Let me know. All right, and now we're on to our next round. this right out there there we go okay so we've got one blue and one half blue half green so the bottom is green or, I mean the bottom is blue and then it's eight green in a row so that's nice um, I forgot to unwind my yarn after every single round here because there's so many color changes it like winds the yarn up like this so what you got to do is you just hold the yarn up and let it untangle itself like this. Whee! And it untangles. Is the mystery pattern a fuzzy cactus? It is not a fuzzy cactus, but I have made a fuzzy cactus. Where is the fuzzy cactus? Um, let's see. I actually don't know where I put the fuzz. Oh, there it is. One sec.
So I've been practicing um, a bunch of different, oh, thank you for the, someone donated. Thank you, Anonymous. Um, so as part of the, uh, the photosynthesis kit, we're gonna be making a customizable cactus. And with that customizable cactus, I wanted to come up with a bunch of different um, ways you can customize it, uh, including a bunch of ways to customize your spikes. And do, in, in that process, I made a cactus using uh, Philip's bean stitch, uh, Sir Pro Gray. He goes by Sir Pro Gray. He's, a, he's the designer that did, um, you know what? Let's show you. I'll show you one of the patterns that he did. Yeah, we're gonna show him right now. He did, uh, here is for Anonymous's donation, we're gonna put this on the site, or on, on the page. This is our black rhino that was made by Sir Pro Gray for our Earth Day um, crochet along in, I believe this was our first year. Yeah, our first year, a few years ago. Hey, Jimbo, we're trying to talk to people. Well, later. We can hang out later. Well, I'm sorry. Ah. Okay, so he made this uh, and he, during this pattern, he actually completely invented a new stitch that he called the bean stitch. You can kind of see it here in the feet. It, he called it the bean stitch because it makes little toe beans and they're very, very subtle here on this rhino. But I discovered in doing this cactus, I wanted to use this bean stitch in the cactus to make like a bunch of texture on the cactus. And in doing that, I realized that you can pull out one of the loops of this bean stitch and cut it and it makes it fuzzy. Look at our fuzzy cactus. So this is gonna be one of the customizations is that you can make actually like really fuzzy cactuses super duper easy. It's almost like doing a, um, it's almost like doing a loop, the loop stitch, which is what I use for the, uh, the grass of the bonsai tree that you can see right here. It's almost like that, but it's on the opposite side and not as long of of grass so it's super unique i'm very ooh, almost fell i'm very very excited to uh use it for a lot more things but using it for this cactus is going to be the first instance of it but like imagine i can make anything furry with this you can make fur with cotton yarn which is something i've always wanted to do uh also check this out he comes out of his little pot and he's got little feet which is just cute and he does have a little butt crack so don't you worry about that um, but there is your little sneak peek into the customizable cactuses and let's get back to crocheting uh, and remember where we left off. We left off with eight green stitches in a row. The color or the, the check marks in this pattern make this like way, way easier to do because without the check marks, sometimes I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot where I stopped. Um, by the way, we just made, I believe right here, this is like Europe. So we've made a bunch of Europe uh, and we're working across that the entire continent now. So we're, we're basically, I think we're in like, I think we just made like, I think that might be Ukraine somewhere around here. Like that stitch right here is probably Ukraine. Now we're in, uh, I think we're in Russia now. One. We want eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this will be eight. And then we do, and then we work on, I think we're on to Japan. Like we're actually, maybe, I think this is like North Korea. And then this is South Korea maybe, or Japan. I don't really understand, I don't know. It's hard to tell at this point. It'll be a lot easier to tell in just a second when we turn everything around, um, which is what I always like to do at the end of each round, is I like to turn it around and look at what we've just made. Uh, we're working on the top of the Pacific Ocean now, I think. And we're about to get to America. So I believe we'll probably be crocheting a decent amount of your homes here. Uh, we're currently making the top of, Can or the bottom of Canada and the top of America. So. This loop right here is probably like Washington, whereas the bottom right here will be like Vancouver. So we've got Vancouver and Washington. And then we're going across the top of America. And then we'll make the, so we got one, two, and, right? One, two, and 
three. Right, like that. This is gonna be, I think this right here is Michigan. And then we're gonna make like the Great Lakes with this blue stitch. So we'll go under like that. And that, that stitches the Great Lakes. And then we have right here will be Maine and New York and everything at the like the top tip of America. And then we can start with the um, Atlantic Ocean going back across the ocean. Awesome. Here, you can kind of see it a little bit better now. So you see how, see that's going to be top of America. I mean like that little, you know, area right there. You can kind of see, it's hard to tell. We're going to need a few more rounds before it really starts to evolve, but looks pretty good. That was your stitch. There you go, Cooper. Tom, thank you so much for your donation. Tom just donated 25 bucks to the World Wildlife Fund. So let's see. We're going to we're going to say that money is going to help protect Let's go with Uh, let's go with I think my favorite pattern that I've designed so far. Um for one of these World Wildlife Funds, this guy right here, this guy's name is Sid the Sloth. Um this one was my first pattern uh, for the collaboration Earth Day patterns. It came out in the same year that our Rhino there did. And I love this one. I mean, first off, we put magnets in all the, in the hands so he can grab onto things and he can have them open. He can also sit up pretty well like that, which is pretty cute. Uh, but what's really cool is like, look at how cute his little face is and you can brush it. So if you wanted to, I didn't, I have one that I brushed and one that I didn't. This one is not brushed, but if you brush it, it becomes super duper fuzzy. Uh, and I loved that about it. So Tom, this guy is gonna be out just for you. Thank you so much for your donation. It's for a very good cause. And yeah, I really appreciate that. We've already almost raised a hundred bucks. So that's pretty good. Not too bad. Not to mention who knows how many donations on the site too. There we go. We'll go ahead and move our materials over make room for our endangered boys. All right, now we're on to, let's see, I think I'm on round four, round five now. So this stitch right here, I think is gonna be like Spain. Um, someone asked if Nova Scotia is there. Nova Scotia is, yeah, right here is gonna be Nova Scotia. I believe. Um, I've actually been to Nova Scotia before. Jules' family owns a, like a, basically a mansion out there. Um, old mansion that's been, that was built like hundreds of years ago now uh, that we go to visit all the time. So yeah, we, we've been to Nova Scotia before and we'll be going back for pretty soon. It's a very fun trip that we go on. Okay, next we got this stitch right here, which I believe is like the, that's like the sea between um, basically between Spain and Africa, I think. And then we have this stitch here. I think this is like Italy, right? Like that. And then we have an all blue stitch. So this is gonna be that, that ocean between Italy and um, Western Europe or South Europe. I don't really know how directions work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, you can kind of see it there. I think I did that right. Let's see. One, two. One regular blue. Green half. Yeah, yeah, we're right. We're doing it right. Just questioning myself for a second. And I don't know what this place is, but let's see. That. Okay, now we're gonna go back across uh, like Russia and stuff and go over to Asia. One and two, I forgot to unwind our yarn. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. That's pretty good. 
Oh, Jimbo joined back in. Good, good boy. What a good boy. Um, okay, we got two more. So now we're in, I think this is China. We're making right here. And then this, this stitch is definitely part of Japan. This is like North Japan. And then we've got the Pacific Ocean. So we'll do, I didn't miss an increase anywhere, did I? No, we got our increase there. Great. So now we got six stitches of the Pacific Ocean to go through. One, two, three, and then increase right here. So we've just crossed the Pacific Ocean. Okay, and now we're at our coast, and I believe this next stitch right here, this pull through, I think is the top of, of California. So that, San Francisco's somewhere in there, which is where I used to live, which is kind of fun. And we have one, two, three, four stitches of America to go through. So there's top, that this stitch probably was like Oregon and stuff and then we're going across America so there's like Nevada and Oklahoma and everything this is probably gonna have Tennessee and stuff in it right there on the edge and then our last stitch right here will have everything at the east northeast of America so probably a lot of people in the chat right now I just made you do you see yourself? Go and wave. Wave for us. You can see him. See him waving? Right there. <laughs> All right. And then we got back to the Atlantic Ocean. So we got one there, and then an increase at the end. Two and three. Okay. Pretty cute. All right, now let's let's take a look at. Now you can kind of see America coming together there. Wouldn't that be nice? America coming together. What a novel idea. Um, <laughs> and here is all of Russia basically, and here is a lot of Europe. Germany's like right here somewhere. Kind of see it. And we're gonna start with Africa right there. You know, in designing this. I, it made me realize like how big certain continents are because I, I wanted to make it as geographically correct as I could. And so in doing that, I was like, wow, Africa is huge, you guys. Like huge. Because all of our, all of our, you know, um, maps and stuff, they don't really show it. They, they kind of don't, they, they give you a false perception of how big certain continents are because of how the earth is shaped. It's like the roundness of it. But Africa is so big, so big. Okay, now we're on to round one, two, three, four. I think we're on round six. I need to start using our check marks here at this point because I can't do so many things at once. I can do a lot at once. I believe that last round was our last round of increasing too. Let's just count one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we're on round six. Oh, round six is actually pretty easy because it's like most of Africa. So all of this is like connected now, except for I did that stitch wrong. Boom, there we go. So one blue and then nine. We need nine all the way across Europe. So and in the top of Africa. So, boom, two. I think that stitch, actually no, this stitch right here I think is Egypt and stuff. And then we've got, I think Israel would be like that stitch right there. And then we're just gonna go across the Middle East there. Um, I believe we're starting to make I think that's the top of India somewhere around here. Um, we're gonna come back to that later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then 
nine. So this is part of China, I think. And then we've got back to one of the islands of Japan. All right. It was really hard condensing this pattern into this small of amount of stitches. Basically what I had to do is I bought a bunch of little tiny earths and I drew on them and separated them into where I thought stitches were gonna be. And then that was like the start of how I wanted to learn how, where to design each stitch. And then I did uh, like just a lot of practice and trial and error until I got it looking the way I wanted it to. But I think this pattern probably was one of the most difficult patterns for me to design. Uh, and I'm so proud of it. I've never been more proud of like how how it all worked out. One, two, three, four, five, and here is six. Okay, we're back to America. This is gonna be the top. I think that's like where San Diego is actually. It's somewhere split in between. So it's like part of Mexico right here, um, also part of California. But this bottom part right there, there I am. Right here, you can see. Zoom in. Let's, let's get this focus on auto. It's really zoomed in here. Can you see? See me right there? You can see me. See my little glasses? Right there. See here. See me waving? You can see it, right? You can see it. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow. Hey, hit like this video down below for my stupid jokes. <laughs> Going across America. And there we go. All right. You can kind of see how those stitches worked up. And now we're back. Uh, I believe that right here was Florida. Florida was a difficult one for me to, to come up with because I wanted to make that like really long, you know, um, not island, what's it called? Like, uh, uh, when it's surrounded by water on three sides, but it's not a peninsula. I wanted to really make the peninsula of, of Florida, but it just, there wasn't enough room for it. And it's not really as big as I thought it was. I always thought the peninsula of Florida was like huge and it's big, no question. But like in the grand scheme of the world, it's smaller than I thought it was. So I had to make a compromise there and not make it as distinct as I really wanted it to. It does pull it down a little bit, but it's not as distinct as I was kind of hoping it would be. Yeah, you can kind of see how we're making the stitches up there. There's the big Pacific Ocean. Here's all of Europe. And we'll keep on keeping on. That was round six, now I'm on round seven. Hello from Texas. Louis jokes on world tour. I love that. <laughs> All right. So now we're in, uh, let's get back to Africa. And we are on round seven. So we got four here. One, two, three, and four. Make the top here. All right, so that is the top or like middle top of Africa here. Kind of see that's the horn of Africa, I think, right there. Um, okay, wait, how many? Where, where, blah, 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 blah. One, two, three, four. This is our half color change. And then we have the Indian Ocean. Boom, right here. And then India, this this basically this whole stitch is India right here. So the whole green stitch, so the top of India, here's the rest of India, and then we go switch back over. So that that is basically all of India and Pakistan. It's right, like right above it right there. And then we've got, what do we have after India? More Indian Ocean. And then, uh, Thailand and Taiwan and everything in East Asia. So, 
boom it's just all i like there's just so many islands over here i've always wanted to see this part of the world it's it's always been a big goal of mine to see that part of the world um jules and i are going to go back to japan pretty soon so that's pretty close and i'm hoping that in that same trip we can go to seoul in korea i'd really like to see uh south korea But yeah, there you go. Kind of see, see the stitches there. You see that this is supposed to be Japan right there. We got China, there's India, and then the start of Africa. And then the start of Africa. Okay, one, two, three, four. We got six blue stitches in between for the Pacific Ocean. Now, unfortunately, there technically is no Hawaii because Hawaii is so tiny, it's so itty bitty, but it would be like right there. Actually, we're gonna say that little green bit right there is Hawaii. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We got six to work with. Okay, now we get to make Mexico. Hola. Como estas right there. And then we've got the top of South America right here. So we got, boom, this is the Gulf of Mexico. Boom, boom. And then we got three more stitches. To start our way across the Atlantic Ocean again. One, two, and three. All right, let's take a look and unwind our yarn. Let's start with the unwinding part. All right, let's take a look. See, so you can kind of see how Florida, that's that's Florida right there, that little tiny bit right there. And that little bit right here, actually let's get my needle right here. This is supposed, that's gonna be Texas. Right there, there's Florida. Here's the East Coast, or I mean the West Coast. There's the East Coast of America. And then here's Canada. And then if we go over to here, you can start to see more of the rest of the world here. There's India. Yeah, it's looking good, looking good. Any ideas on how we should customize this? Maybe we could add, a, I think I might add a little tiny heart on where I live. I think that would be really cute. It's something I've wanted to do on past Earths too. So I think this is the perfect one to do because this one's, you want me to say America with an accent? Okay, what kind of accent? America, like that? You want a southern accent? Because I can do a southern accent just fine. There are quite a lot of types of southern accents though, so this is gonna be more of like a, like a, a real southern twang here. Whereas you got like, just different kinds of southern accents all over America. All right, now we're on to the next round, I think I'm on round eight. We got one, two blue, and then we've got the center of Africa here. One, boom. And then one, two, Skip to my blue. Skip to my me. All right, there we go. So that's kind of like the center of Africa there, I think. One, two, yeah. And it's gonna come over really far there after this. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna do uh, more of the Indian Ocean. Going across. One, two, three, and four. And then we got, we got Australia. We got Australia here. Now the biggest complaint that I have for my own pattern here is that we have 
Australia looks totally great. But what doesn't, what's a bummer is that there's no New Zealand in this pattern. I totally goofed. And the reason there's no New Zealand was not for lack of trying. I definitely tried to get New Zealand in here. But it was so difficult because of the placement of the stitches. You'll see soon, we're gonna end up doing an invisible decrease in round 10, like pretty much directly where New Zealand was supposed to be. And when I did that, it was like, oh my gosh, there's, I can't, I just can't add New Zealand. That's, it, it was like a real big bummer for me. You added a lake in the middle of Europe? You know, that'll be there eventually. One day there'll be a lake in the middle of Europe. You had a lake like right here somewhere. That's funny. Okay, so where are we at? We want to do eight stitches across. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the longest that the Pacific Ocean is. Seven, and here's eight. Okay, so now we're back to South America. And we're going to be making, I think this is going to be Chile right here. And gonna go across to Brazil one two and three top of that stitch I think this is like Argentina right there that's another place I've always wanted to go to I've always wanted to see Argentina I don't know why I've also always wanted to see Honduras which is a, a kind of a weird one to go see but when I studied anthropology in college um, I did a lot of reports on Honduras and I've always wanted to see it yeah, there we go. It's the end of that round. You can see our planet coming together. Pretty cute, pretty cute. All right. Hugs from Chile. Hi, Valera. Hola. Oh my God, quick little Oh, the chat is working. Never mind. I'm not going to switch to the cat cam because the chat is working. And we'll switch to the cat cam later. Every time I switch screens, it messes that up. Um, okay, let's also, I want to look at something real quick. Okay, so I want to try something out. We've got 82 likes so far. I'm gonna try, let's try to boost those numbers up. If this video gets, mm. thank you for the donation anonymous. I'll add something to the background in just a second. If this video gets enough likes, we're gonna do a giveaway. I think I'm gonna lower the like threshold that I normally had. We're gonna try to just get to 150 likes. So if this video gets 150 likes, we're gonna give away a Jimbo pin. These are our new pins that I haven't added to the shop just yet, but they're gonna be added to the shop very soon. And look at how cute he is. Oh my gosh, he looks just like him. And he's, he's even got his little butt. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna do that. If this video gets 150 likes, we'll do that. So go ahead and like this video down below. And also just, again, look at how cute this pin is. It's so cute. Little pink ball of yarn. Okay. Let's keep on crocheting. What round did I just finish? The round with eight. Okay, so yes, now we're on to our last round of just single crochets, which is nice. We're pretty, we're like almost done actually. One, two, three, which means that we probably are going to be doing a something else here soon. One, two, three, four. And then we want two. This is gonna make the bottom of Africa. So it's gonna be like one, and there's one right here. Just like that. So that's gonna be like, kind of like the bottom of Africa. We're still gonna do South Africa next. South Africa. It's my, this is my South African accent. No, that's kind of New Zealand, huh? I'm not gonna be in choppy. It's simply, it's simply. That's my South African accent. <laughs> if the giveaway happens, how do we join? If the giveaway happens, it'll be next live stream. So um, if we unlock a giveaway in this live stream, that means next live stream, I'll post a link and you'll be able to enter the giveaway that way. So that's how giveaways kind of work.
here. One, two. It's like unlocking a giveaway for later. Three and four. Four. And then we've got Australia. We got Australia here. Oh, yes, and we got to add two things now. Oh, my God, Ariel, thank you for your donation. Let's add a couple of things to the background for you and our anonymous donator. Um, there you can see this is going to be the top of, of Australia. I think we made Sydney actually right there with the top of that stitch. Another place I've always wanted to go to. There's so many places I want to go to. Wish I had, I wish I could go to all these places. Wish I had the time, uh, but more so, I wish I had the money. <laughs> it's expensive to travel. One, two, three. Okay, so we're going across the Pacific Ocean here. Five, one, two, three, four, five, and here's six. Boom. All right, now we've got more of South America. One two and three another place that is way bigger than you realize boom pretty good um someone was asking earlier about selling your the things that they make with the crochet kits by the way so in the photosynthesis crochet kit if you want to you can absolutely sell the things that you make on uh online the only request that i have if you're trying to sell any crochet patterns or anything made with a crochet pattern from club crochet is that you add in the description pattern from club crochet.com but you totally can sell your crochet if you want to um it's actually probably a good way to make your money back for the kit too which is just kind of a fun you know recycling there um okay let's take a look here Looking good, looking good. We still gotta add our little heart there for Callie. And we gotta add our donations. Okay, so first off, I wanna put in, let's add, this is for an, our anonymous donator. We're gonna add a little taper. Look how cute. This is from Ohana Crafts from last year's pattern. And the great thing about this taper is that she did add a little butt, which is, uh, you know, pretty important. Pretty important stuff there. Um, super cute though. I love it. It's actually a really, really easy pattern to make too. She just did some like really simple decreasing here to make the snaws. And uh, yeah, I, this is actually our, uh, our beginner friendly pattern for that year. So yeah, pretty cute. Thank you for your donation. Add that to the background here. And then we've got another donation. Um, for that donation, I think we're going to do something a little... Let's add in, now this is not one of the patterns on, in the Earth Day collaboration, but it'd be a shame if we weren't, if we were talking about all of these endangered creatures and we didn't add a little tiny polar bear to the background. So this is our little polar bear from our live crochet along during uh, the winter. Oh, hey Jimbo. Jimbo just woke up from his nap. He seems a little grumpy. Uh, <laughs> So we're gonna add our polar bear here, just on our, actually, we'll put them in, in our red panda's lap here. So we might make a polar bear today, we might make a, um, we could also do a, yes, an elephant, thank you, buddy. Or a little rhino. Actually, if you guys have suggestions on what you want me to make after this, because we will have time for at least one bonimal, um, we can make a bottom on the live stream and we'll see how it goes. We'll design it together. Um, okay, so now I'm on to Jimbo, buddy. I'm on round 10 now. Which means that we're almost done. One, two, three, four of those. And then here is South Africa, right there, just the very tip of South Africa. And there we go. Boom. Now is where we got our invisible decreases. And this is another thing that we didn't get in this pattern is a very clear Madagascar. Madagascar is really, it's honestly, Madagascar is one of my favorite places I've never been there, but I really, really like Madagascar because it houses 
one of my favorite animals, which I can't believe I haven't done a, a pattern for our Earth Day patterns for this, but um, lemurs. Lemurs are one of my favorite animals of all time. I'm I'm obsessed with lemurs. They're like monkeys and and cats like mixed together. I love lemurs so much. Um, I used to live next to a uh, a zoo in San Francisco, and I would go to see the lemurs every day uh, in college. I would just go hang out with the lemurs all day and just crochet. Good times, good times. I love lemurs. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get Madagascar in this as clear as I wish it was. Um, it's supposed to be like right here. You know what? Maybe we'll do some embroidery additions for the places that I wasn't able to get in that I really wish I did, like New Zealand and Madagascar. All right, let's keep on going. We're making the center of Australia where basically no one lives because <laughs> it's way too hot. Boom. And then this is Melbourne's on the left side of or on the on the same coast as as Sydney, right? Is it above Sydney? I can never remember. Or so if you're looking at Australia here, is Melbourne down here and Sydney up here, or is it the other way around? I can't ever remember if Melbourne's lower than Sydney or not. For any Australians out there, let me know. Am I excited for Tears of the Kingdom? Yes, I am very, very, very excited about Tears of the Kingdom. Like, crazy excited. I'm, no joke, I'm a little nervous because I think I'm going to get absolutely obsessed with that game and Jules is gonna wanna play it a bunch so we're gonna have to like switch off all the time and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm like nervous I'm not gonna be able to do any work because I'm just gonna be obsessed with playing Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Maybe I'll live stream some of it so that I can like make an excuse. <laughs> All right, so now we're making more of South America. There. And boom. This will be our last stitch for this round. Just like that. Pretty good. Okay, we only have one more round of color changes and there's really only one color change in this last round, which is nice. And then we go back to using white to make, um, to make Antarctica. Yeah, I definitely wanna do more Zelda stuff. Maybe we'll do a thing, maybe Jules and I will do a thing where she can play and I'll crochet Zelda characters or something. That would be kind of fun for May. All right, so we've got a bunch of stitches here, all blue. Bottom of the earth, mostly blue. One, two, see, three, four, five, and then our images of pieces. I'm working around our green for this round, even though I don't really need to, just because like I've been doing it for all the rest of the stitches and I figured, meh, why not? Might as well keep it up. And then we'll keep doing this repeat. Oh my god, I'm so excited for the soundtrack, dude. Same, same, same. One, two, three, four, five. And then our invisible decrease here. Uh, uh, okay, last few stitches. One, two, three, and then that's four, and then we got, this is the last color change, just a little bit more of South America, and then we're back to finish this up. There we go. Oops, I forgot, we need white yarn now. Because we're going back to uh, South Pole. There we go. And 
I'm just gonna do one stitch in this next one right here before we continue on. Um, do we wanna add a face? That's our question. Let's ask the poll right now. I am definitely gonna add a heart uh, where I live. So we'll grab some different yarn and then uh, we'll see if we can add. Okay, so first off, I wanna add a poll here. All right, should we add a face to our earth? Asked in the chat right now, uh, let me know. If we do add a face, I'll ask you what kind of face we'll add on, but we'll add it right here where, about where uh, Hawaii goes. Uh, in the meantime, while you guys are voting on that, I'm gonna add in just the littlest red heart using our some red yarn to show California because that's where I live. And I just think that's a cute idea that I can't believe I've never done before. Right, Jimbo? Jimbo agrees. So I'm gonna add a heart right here. One, two, three, go like this. Go into, right like that. Just a, I just want the tiniest heart. That one. And then like this. I actually might double that up. So it looks less like a V and more like a heart. I mean, it kind of looks like a heart, but I, I think I want to make it a little bit more heart-like. I know. I know, life is really hard for a cat like you. Ooh, a cactus ankylis sore? Oh my God, keep those ideas going, Sharky Crochet, because that is probably a really good idea for the um, crochet challenge that's gonna be going on in May where I'm gonna challenge everybody to make a customizable, their own customizable cactus, however they want. And then we're gonna, hold on, I'm talking to people. Don't do that because it messes me up when you jump on me. I know you don't care. Well, I love you too. All right, that's, that is what you said. No, I'm not putting words in your mouth. I'm not putting meows in your mouth. There you go, that's pretty good. That looks like that looks like a little hard over like California right there. Very cute. All right, stumble not this. Uh, what was I saying? Hi, that's Chuba. How are you? Have I tried making a mastodon? I don't think I have. What does a mastodon even look like? Jimbo, do you know? Stop eating that yarn. Don't. Jimbo's, Jimbo's taking our white yarn with him. You don't need this stuff, right? You're not, do you really even need to make Antarctica? Yeah, I do. Look at that, that's really cute. I love that. Love that, okay. A saber tooth tiger, I haven't, but that is definitely a plan. So I've been trying to think about future seasons, right? Because we're doing, this year, um, seasons are gonna be uh, photosynthesis, so plants in nature. Uh, then we're gonna do under the sea, we're gonna do fish and sharks and whales and jellyfish. And then after that, we're going to do our holiday hookups. So those are gonna be all holiday themes. We're gonna do Halloween themed patterns. We're going to be doing, um, do I talk to Jimbo when I'm bored? I talk to Jimbo at all times. I'm always talking to Jimbo. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing... Go ahead and end that poll. We're going to be doing um, things like uh, things for Halloween, things for Thanksgiving. Well, we actually won't be doing too many Thanksgiving because it's holidays, uh, not just American holidays. So we'll be doing Halloween and Christmas, a lot of that, um, and, and some uh, more winter holidays. And then after that, 
will be doing uh oh ivy that's an interesting idea and then after that we're going to be doing sweet stitches so we'll be doing things like donuts and cakes and and uh fruits and uh stuff like that uh and so i've been thinking about future seasons after that and one of the things i want to come out with eventually is um ice age ice age theme patterns so like things like saber tooth tigers and stuff uh, i think would be a lot of fun jimbo yes He's rolling on the floor, and he's so cute. Yeah, you are. Now he's biting my foot. Because he loves me. Uh, right? That's why. Um, okay, so now we're going to add a face. You guys voted on a face. Let's do it. We're going to be using our 8mm eyes. And Jimbo is currently chewing. As you can see, it's shaking here. That's because Jimbo is chewing on the cord that connects the camera to the computer. And you need to chill. Take a chill pill, bub. Yeah. Here. This is Jimbo's favorite toy. A plesiosaur from our dinosaur stuff. You can see how it's covered in his, in his fur, too. Jimbo! Hey! Hey! Dingus! Go get it! Good boy. Alright. Let's add our face. Um, let's see. I want some votes on different faces that we can do here. So we're going to do a poll. What kind of face should we make? Winky face? Smile? I want to do a kissy. Kissy wink gonna be like that or what's the last one what's a good face option I need a fourth vote let's go with a sick face oh, sure I, no, we don't want to make it sad. All right. What, I did the vote. I'd rather not make a sick face, but if you vote on it, we vote on it. That's just the way it's gonna go. I'm voting Winky personally. Okay. I think that's also really cute, Sharky. That's actually one of the reasons why I'm cool with him playing with that toy is because I think it's just so funny, the idea that it would eat him if he was, if it was uh, its real size. Oh, stuck out tongue. Yeah, that's better, that's better, that's better. We're gonna say, if you vote sick face, I'm doing a stuck out tongue instead. All right. Because I like that more. I like that a lot more. Um, okay, so you guys go ahead and vote on that. Uh, someone asked, why am I using a new hook? This is actually the hook that comes with the photosynthesis kit, which is what we're making, what we're using the yarn for today. Um, here it is. Woo! This is our new photosynthesis kit. Throw out this stuff. Um, I didn't open it for our yarn holder yet because I just didn't want to do that in this video, but... Um, I totally could have and should have probably. Um, actually, you know what? While you guys are voting on that, I'm going to put back our blue yarn into our kit so that way we can have everything in one place and not have to worry about it like getting lost because our blue and our green yarn is actually, we don't need to use it again until uh, a few weeks from now when we'll continue the patterns. So we'll go ahead, we'll add our green yarn here. And we'll do our, put our blue yarn back. We'll need this again when we make the uh, the bonsai tree. Toss those back in there. And we'll come back to this stuff later. Oh, Jimbo's back. Causing a ruckus. Yeah? All right, let's clean up our station a little bit. Okay. What do we vote on for the face, by the way? 
21 votes. So we can do a few more votes. We'll wait a sec. Um, I'll go ahead and get our eyes opened up in the meantime. The kits come with six millimeter and eight millimeter eyes, uh, so you can do either one. We're using eight millimeters for this pattern. We could use six millimeter, I suppose, but we're gonna go with eight. But it comes with both, so that way you can customize your stuff, make it however you want. There we go, there's our eyes. Uh, we might end up needing only one of these if you guys vote on Winky Face. I like that you, you've you named my future kid Dewey because of Huey, Dewey, and Louie, I'm guessing. Ready? We're gonna throw we're gonna throw this money bag that Jimbo's playing with so that he leaves the cords alone. Go! <laughs> Did you hear him? He's like Okay. Uh, alright, your vote is done. We're gonna end the poll. And what did we vote on? All right, we went with just a classic smile. Classic smile. Um, I really like this thread that I got for this kit because it's just like just thick enough where it shows the smile and stuff really well, but doesn't like, um, I don't know. I've, I've used some thread before in the past that just doesn't work as well as it, as this stuff does because it's just like, just like the yarn, it's like a very dense thread. It's like very clear, dense thread. Before I was using this one, which you can kind of see is a really, really small thread. And here's our new thread. You can see it's like double the thickness of our old thread. Just another reason to get the photosynthesis kit. All right. Put that stuff there. Um, I usually like adding the smile first and then adding the eyes afterwards. So we're gonna go with the smile. Um, and let's go ahead and put the smile, put one eye here, smile over there and one eye there. Yeah, that'll be cute because the heart will be right next to the eye, which will be kind of adorable. Okay, now one, two stitches over come out in the center of this stitch. Uh, obviously, this is actually one of the things that I added to the new updated pattern, is that I added like in detailed instructions on how to add smiles and a face and things like that to it and the keychain and stuff. Because that wasn't in the original pattern because I'm a dingus and I didn't do that for the original one. And I was like, I wanna make that better. There's our little smile, very cute, very easy easy squeezy smile just double knot these one yeah I'll show you actually um, the yarn comparison between Club Crochet and Lily Sugar and Cream Yarn um, I will show you that in just a second actually it'll give you a good idea of the difference of what our new yarn is like um, so actually here we'll use white because I have both kinds of white yarn right next to me. So this is Club Crochet yarn on the left and on the right will be Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. It might be a little bit difficult for you to see the difference. So Lily Sugar and Cream yarn on the right, Club Crochet yarn on the left. Let's see if I can't get a better zoom in here show you the difference so the first big thing that you're gonna notice between the two different yarns it's kind of hard to see because you can't really you can't feel what it feels like also but it definitely feels very different the two the two yarns feel very different to me um, I use a lot of Lily and sugar and cream uh, in the past it, one thing about it is that it's Lily sugar and cream is much fuzzier it's a lot fuzzier of a thread whereas the club crochet yarn isn't really as fuzzy and the reason it's not as fuzzy is because it's got those like micro or those multiply threads that makes it so it doesn't get as fuzzy and the biggest difference is going to be when you unwind the yarn you're really going to see the different ply so both of these are four ply yarn four ply yarn basically means that they are four strands woven together 
here. I've almost got the, there we go. Okay, so this is Lily Sugar and Cream's ply. You can see it's four strands of strands just wound together. This one is a club crochet one. You can see it's four strands wound together, but every one of these strands are like double the thickness of the Lily Sugar and Cream one because each one of these individual strands are consistent of other tinier strands. So it makes it like really, really strong yarn. Now you can see I'm kind of like squishing it. I think it's eight strands, no, six strands woven and then four of those woven to make it super, look how shiny it is too. I can't really see. Anyhow, it's cool. I'm really proud of this yarn. Uh, I think it is very, very good yarn. And I, yeah, I went through a lot of different, um, a lot of different iterations of this yarn before I went with this one. Uh, can you do more Sunday live streams because you have school on Thursdays and you can't join early? Uh, yeah, I will be. I will try to get to more Sunday live streams in the future. Um, I'll try to start to diversify my live streams a little bit more. Sixteen strand Galaxy Brain yarn, exactly. Um, do I have the yarn specially made? Yes, I do, Mary. The yarn is specially made just for us, so it is Club Crochet special branded yarn. Um, it is custom milled yarn too, which means that they do all, uh, well, that also means that they do all the, um, wow, look at those eyes, gorgeous. And I love that the heart is right next to the eyes. Uh, let's zoom this back out, by the way. Um, the custom mill that we're working with also does uh, all the dyeing. So they deal with all the dyeing process. So it's not like made in two different places, which means that the dyeing is really, really vibrant, um, which you can kind of see of this yarn. Um, I'll show you a few different color differences between Lily Sugar and Cream and our Club Crochet yarn um, in just a second as well. So you can see how like much more vibrant our yarn is, which is kind of cool. There we go. There's our eyes locked in. I love that the heart is right next to the eyes. That is just too cute to me. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, yeah, let me show you. Yeah, uh, Linda. Yes, I do actually. Let me let me find that actually. I have, I believe, is this one made with? No, that's our yarn. You know what? I think I gave away the earth made with the other yarn. Maybe I have one in here. Uno momento, por favor. Do I have one? Yeah, here you go. Okay. So here's an example. This is the earth. This is an earth made with Lily sugar and cream yarn. And this is one. Here's a finished one made with our club crochet yarn. So you can kind of see what the difference is. The first thing you'll notice is that this one's going to be much more vibrant and the, the clarity of the stitches is going to be much clearer. Look at how clear those stitches are. Way clear stitches. This one's also, you can see how it's, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but it's like pilling. Pilling means that like the fuzz is becoming like little, it's just, it's fuzzier basically is what it means. But yeah, this gives you an idea of the difference of the kinds of yarn. Um, the new yarn doesn't pill really, it's not fuzzy much at all. It's very crisp. It's also, this one is way squishier, like way squishier. I mean, our yarn is squishy, but it's not as, like it holds its shape a lot better. Yeah, I just love this new yarn. Um, okay. Let's keep on crocheting on. We have to add, um, well, I guess let's do a round of decreasing here and then we'll stuff it a little bit. Uh, Amaze Feed, will we be selling just the yarn by chance? Yes, we will eventually. Um, I'll be doing like color packs eventually. I probably, I mean, I might be selling the yarn by itself in like balls of yarn by themselves eventually, but in the initially I'm gonna start with color packs instead. Um, I only have so much yarn that I have, like that I've ordered in the in our first uh, wave, because 
I mean, you, the true honesty of why I only ordered so much is because I only had so much money. Like, I, I, I couldn't afford too much. So I was like, okay, we're going to do this. I ordered enough for so that we could do a bunch of annual passes. And then that way, if we make enough sales on the annual pass, I can do additional orders of yarn so I can start offering things like uh, color pack and, and ordering the yarn individually. So... Yes, the answer is yes, that will happen eventually. Hi, River, how are you? All right, Sharkies, thanks for joining. How much do you think the packs will cost? I don't know yet, honestly. They'll be a lot cheaper than the seasonal kits, for sure. Um, but I, I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't put enough thought through for it. Um... Gauge. Oh, yeah, someone wanted to ask the gauge. The gauge is about the same as uh, as uh, Lily Sugar and Cream Yarn, so it's about worsted weight yarn. Um, there's, like, a very subtle... The Club Crochet Yarn has a very subtle thickness, a little bit thicker yarn, but it's, like, negligible. It's almost... You, you, can't, you can't really tell the difference um, once you start crocheting it. All right, Karshandro, thanks for joining talk soon make sure to like the video on your way out <laughs> all right so now i'm doing our last round of decreasing and then we can sew it up and then work on uh just something fun i think maybe doing a bonimal would be fun if you guys gotten any ideas for suggestions actually you know it'd be great that last green spot right here that's where you live right you're at the very base of I didn't realize that. That's cool. Um, okay. I know we're gonna ask, hold on. Okay, I just started a Q&A in the chat um, that you can ask or answer or ask me to make a different kind of bonimal. So go ahead and you can start populating that, and then I'll make a bonimal after we're done with this earth for the remainder of our live stream. We still have a little bit longer to go, though, because I need to. I want to sew on our keychain, but we're almost done. There we go. Yeah. Hi, buddy. Why do you insist on eating all of my yarn? You are, it's like you're a cat or something. What a brat. Brat of a cat. Cat brat. That should be a show on Nickelodeon. Okay, we need a little bit of this white yarn before I put it away. Like that much. This is just gonna be used for our keychain. And I'm gonna put the rest of our white yarn back into the kit so that uh, we're gonna use this next for our cactus. That's right, Jimbo. Jimbo remembers. We'll be using it for a cactus later. But we won't get back to our, um, we won't be getting back to our seasonal kit until, until the, until a few weeks from now, by the way. Someone says cat, we got snail, elephant, chameleon. Oh, that's a fun one, Tanja. That's a fun idea. Yeah, feel free to suggest any kind of bonimal that you think we should make after we're done with our earth here in that q and It's a great spot to do it because only I can see your responses. So we can't, we don't flood the, the chat with responses. Okay. I just want to squish. I always want to like squish my piece a little bit to kind of like loosen up the threads. Like in the center here, it's kind of pulling in. I think I crochet a little tighter right there. So I'm going to try to like stretch it out by pushing it out on the inside with my pencil. It's very subtle. It's like barely even noticeable, but I notice it. And I don't want to notice that. Do 
Jeez. River, that's a bummer. That makes that's that's not easy. River said they got they broke their hand and the nurse just gave them an ice pack. <laughs> yeah, you should go to the doctor. Alright. We're gonna sew our piece closed and then add on our keychain. By the way, the next live stream we're gonna be doing is going to be for our uh, one of our Earth Day uh, endangered creatures for this year, um, which will be Sir Pearl's Gray's pattern next. So next Thursday at 3 p.m., we're going to be doing a... Let's see, do I tell you what it is or do I let you figure it out? I'll tell you. We're going to be making a sea turtle. Sir Pearl Gray and I this year decided to do... We both decided to do patterns... Uh, of different kinds of shelled reptiles let's go with that so he's doing a sea turtle and i'm doing a um a tortoise and they're so cute they're both like so individual too i really really like that we did that this year because it's just i don't know yeah you'll like them i think you'll like them a lot okay now let's go ahead and add our keychain real quick and then we can get started on our next pattern today We got, oh, we got a couple of requests for cats. One. We're gonna go around to this stitch. Okay, yes. Two. Here, where we can double knot these two ends and we'll have our keychain done. There we go. Okay. Guys, our Earth keychain is done. One of our six projects for the seasonal kit are finished. How cool is that? Again, if you want to sign up for a seasonal kit, they're on discount right now because it's pre order. Um, you can learn more in the description. But sign up ASAP to get that discount. Also, if you have a member, honestly, okay, so if you want the cheapest cost for this kit, um, I'll let you in on a secret. Uh, but well, first off, look at how cute this is. What a cute, what a cute little earth. I love that we added our little heart there to make it a little bit more custom. Very, very cute. Oh, I love this pattern so much. So cute. Look at, look at Australia there. Okay. Hi, Tegan. Um, yes, yeah, so if you want the cheapest cost for those seasonal kits, by the way, uh, the best way to do it is... Ooh, gosh. That's a good suggestion, Cosmo. Sorry. Cosmo just suggested a zebra and a wild uh, a wildebeest. And I like those ideas. Um... If you want the cheapest cost for a seasonal kit, here's what you do. First off, go to the website and sign up for a membership. Um, you get a free trial, so you don't have to pay anything. It's just five months, uh, five, or I mean, sorry, five day free trial or seven day free trial. Um, and it's, yeah, completely free. Sign up for that. That'll get you an additional 5% discount when you sign up for a seasonal kit. Um, it comes with a 5% discount right now for signing up for the seasonal kit because it is um, pre-order discount so you get five percent off for that you get an additional five percent off for your membership giving you ten percent off of the cost and then to get even more off use the code hooked h-o-o-k-e-d at checkout and you'll get free shipping so that is going to be the cheapest way you can get your um your crochet your seasonal kit uh pre-ordered so if you'd like to sign up now okay uh someone uh 
how do I add the keychain? Uh, so we just did add the keychain. Now I did do in the video tutorial, I explained it a little bit easier, um, but it's actually really, really easy to add keychains. You just use a strand of yarn, you go through close to the top and then you go through this hoop and then you repeat that three times and then you come back out and double knot it. Uh, this It is in the video tutorial for this though. So if you wanna to go to the video tutorial by going to clubcrochet.com slash earth, uh, you can find it there. That's probably the best way to find it, um, Cosmo. Okay, so we're gonna put this to the side. Our little planet Earth looks pretty cute. Uh, again, if you would like to help support this fundraiser that we are currently trying to raise money for, um, you totally can by donating to the World Wildlife Fund. And if you donate, I'll add something cute to the background for you. Um, it's going to a good cause. I highly suggest you donate. Uh, it's gonna go to protecting our natural planet. So you should donate. Okay, let's make something else. We'll take a quick second. All right, so our choices for what we wanna make, someone says a giraffe, that's wild, a crocodile, a Jimbo, and you're welcome, Anna. Thank you for your, thank you for saying thank you. I appreciate that. Can I do a snail or a cat to shut your sister's mouth? That's funny. Have I made an axolotl? No, I haven't. In a mini Jimbo. Okay, okay, let's let's go ahead and do a vote. Um, I believe the vote should be between Go with a all right we're gonna end the q a and now we're gonna vote what bonimal should i make all right so here are your choices based on your suggestions. All right, go ahead, vote on which one you want me to make in the chat right now. Um, it is between making a cat. These are all your suggestions, by the way. A cat, an elephant, a chameleon, or a wildebeest. Vote now or forever hold your bonimal. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pull up the bonimal pattern in the meantime. So that way I can work off of that. Because it'll make, I think it'll make my life a little easier. even though I'm pretty sure I remember how to make it. Um, I'm gonna vote, I think I'll vote for, I don't know. I'm gonna vote for this one. Did I vote? Ooh, it is a close vote right now. Wow. That is a close vote. Okay. We'll open this pattern up. Oops. <laughs> Jimbo has, has gone to the jewels. A Jimbo Bonomo would be very cute. I don't know how to do that just yet. I'd have to think about that a little bit more. Honestly. Okay. Uh, I might, I might be able to use your help, Cooper, writing the pattern down. 
It depends on what the pattern is. Honestly, I think some of these are, should be pretty easy for me though. I think I can remember how to do a lot of these. Okay, we voted. Oh my gosh, it was a really close call. Only 21 votes, I'm shocked. All right, the vote is for a chameleon. Whew, whew. All right, that's gonna be fun. Let's get some yarn. We're gonna need, okay, so we're gonna definitely need some green. Maybe this is a little too green though. See any green? We're gonna need. Let's pull up pictures of a chameleon real quick. Um, I think we actually should use two shades of green because then we can use one green for the eyes and then the other green for the body. So maybe we do like a lime green. Let's see. What do I have here? Yeah, we could do this. So we could use this for our eyes and this for our body, maybe. Yeah, I could imagine that working pretty well. Um, I might use a little bit of our forest green for the, um, for like some lines on the back, maybe. And then we probably are going to want some pink for the tongue. gone through like all of my pink oh there it is okay so we probably are going to want a little bit of this pink yarn for the tongue and then obviously we're going to want some safety eyes i'm just going to use i'll use our six millimeter eyes for this one do i have my six millimeter eyes anywhere where did i put them i think i put them in the other room Jimbo's back. You want to say hi? Should I walk him out? Or... That's up to you. I mean, yeah. People like to see him. Can you, um, can you grab me my six millimeter eyes from out there? It should just be in the jar. Jules is helping out real quick. Okay. So we're going to be making that bottom mold. Let's use a different, because this one's got its little wrapper on it. I don't want to take my wrapper off. So we're going to grab a different one. Hi, everyone. Thank it's you. Camera shy. Oh, did you hear that? Hopefully, hopefully they heard that. Jewel said that she's camera shy, but she says hi. Which is fair. I think that's allowed. All right, there's our green. Okay, so we're going to use this green for the body, this green for the lines, this for the eyes, this for our tongue. And I think that's all we need. I'm also going to pull up um, a green or a bonimal so I can look at it while I make it. Okay, so we're going to be working. I'm going to use this bonimal as like kind of our template. So I'll be looking at this as I work to uh, try to get the perfect stitch spots. Okay, let's do this. A chameleon. I don't know if chameleons are endangered, but let's be honest. They're going to... Ooh, a glow-in-the-dark chameleon. I might be able to do glow-in-the-dark eyes. Huh. Should we vote on that? No, nah, let's just do the green eyes. I don't want to go grab the other one. Hi, Jimbo. Am I going to sell mini club crochet yarn balls? I might. I might do like a series of like where you can just order like a rainbow of tiny balls of yarn. Hey, Jimbo, stop. No, please don't. He's laying on my feet. Now he's laying on the ball of yarn. He's so silly. <laughs> You're gonna hang yourself. He just like put his, oh, he's such a dork. Okay, one, two. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We need to add, there's gotta be things all over this chameleon to make it individual and different from our regular bonimals, which is gonna include things like adding a lip. We're gonna have to add, 
we're gonna have to add hmm. okay we're gonna have to add a horn on the back here so I don't know if it should be this stitch or the next stitch but we should do a spiked bobble on the back of her head So, let's look at our piece here. I think I would say, actually, maybe it'd be nice to do a little spike here instead. So we could do a little point. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, do we sell safety eyes? We do sell some safety eyes. I'm gonna be selling a lot more safety eyes soon, Anna. Um, the best thing you could do is buy a bottle of eyes like this. It comes with a hundred safety eyes and uh, this cool little bottle with our logo on it. Great way to support the channel too. Um, okay, so I think what I'm gonna try to do here is let's do a little point. This is gonna be our, f like, you know how they have like kind of like a, like a fin in the back of their head. Hey, stop. Jimbo. Say hi. Say hi. No, don't. He's cursing at you guys. Say hi. Don't be mean. You want to say anything? You just want to purr? Look how white you are. You look like a ghost in the camera. Okay, boy. Be free. Do not unplug anything. Thank you. Okay. One. I'm gonna do two, three here. And I'll do a slip stitch in the first, single crochet in the second. Let's see how that goes. Stop it. <laughs> Jimbo. Dude is wild. He is eating the cord that connects the audio to the screen. So that's fun. Hopefully that won't break. All right, I think that'll be enough for our frill, uh, for our little um, fin at the back of our head here. Jimbo, stop, bud. Okay, let's do an increase here. I don't know if this fin is gonna work how I really want it to, but it might, it totally might. I'm gonna look at our guy while we're making this. We got one, two, okay, great. So one here, and then we're gonna switch to our green yarn. This is gonna be for our eyeballs. For our eyeballs. So crazy. Don't teach my cat curse words. You guys are a bad influence on Jimbo. <laughs> is Jimbo a teenager? He is seven. Uh, and in cat years, I think cat years are like, I think he's like, I think he's a little older than me. I actually think he's like 32 or 33 cat years. But I don't know. That's I'm also just kind of like, you know, that's not real, right? One, and then we're gonna do another green here. This will be for the eye, for the other eye rather. One, two, Okay, so we got our eyes. That's gonna be round two for us. So it's basically, round two, by the way, if you are trying to crochet this along with me, um, I'll do my best at explaining what I'm doing uh, because I don't really want to turn this into a tutorial, but you know, it'd be nice to have at least some explanation. Uh, what I did here is I basically did the same as the frog, the top of the frog, except I added a little 
thin in the back that we're gonna crochet around. So before I did round two, I did, I chained three, I slip stitched into the first chain and then I single crocheted into the second chain. Uh, and that will hopefully create our little fin in the back of our head. Um, I kind of think we might have wanted that to be a little bit bigger, but whatever, it'll work for right now. Okay, so that's round two. Now I'm gonna do round three, which should be very interesting. I'm gonna crochet around our fin, start, and hopefully get this fin to participate with us. Yeah, I don't know if that fin is exactly what we're looking for. I might wanna change that to a spiked bobble stitch here instead, which might give us more of like a, a fin look. What do we think about that? Because this doesn't really look the way I wanted it to. I mean, I guess it kind of does, like a little bit, but eh, we'll just keep going with this. I might change that to a spike bobble later. Micro crochet. Plant out. Uh, I'm planning trying it out since you want to make tiny amigurumi. Yep, well that, I'm definitely, uh, I definitely know how to do tiny crochet, that's for sure. If you know any brand, brand of yarn that's good for micro crochet, tell me. I would say actually what your best shot for micro crochet yarn would be is um, probably a, uh, Probably an embroidery yarn is going to be your best bet. Something like that. Um, okay, so now I think what I, so here's what I think we're going to do here when we get to the eye is I think I'm going to work into the back loops only for all these stitches, like all the way around here. We're going to do our stitches as normal, but we're going to work in the back loops only, which is going to create a little line across the mouth here. And we're going to use that to bolster it up to make a lip. Um, so that's my, uh, so back to your micro crochet question. If you want to do micro crochet, I suggest maybe using embroidery yarn, um, which will probably help the best for actually making like ultra mini patterns. Uh, but you can also just use regular yarn, like my Lily sugar and cream that I'm currently using right now, uh, and just crochet smaller pieces that will also probably work really well. One, two, three. Or see, so I'm making, I'm working only on back loops, which is creating this little line that goes under the mouth or under the eyes. And I think we can use those to uh, do slip stitches into is what I'm going to try. So we're going to try that after this. If this doesn't work, I might go back and reach start. Um, but I think this will work. This seems like a, this seems like a good idea. Increase one, two, three. Four and five, and then we'll do another increase here. So I did, I worked in the back loops for a majority of the stitches in this round. It does kind of look strange, but I think it'll pay off. I really do. And we'll go one increase and two right there. Do our yarn, do our position. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not too bad. And then I'll just do, I mean, we like I said, we have two different options here. We can try doing slip stitches. Let's just try it. Um, I'm gonna use the inside of my yarn instead of cutting my yarn. So I'll just use the inside strand instead. Turn this into a slip knot. And the idea is gonna be coming from the inside And we're going to go in from the first front loop. And then I'm going to pull this slip knot through that first front loop like that. And then let's just try doing slip stitches all the way across and see what that, what that makes. And then we'll hide this end in at the end. One. Okay, let's see how this goes. Two. Three. Hopefully this works. Oh, I kind of messed that one up. Five. 
another six. That. See, so that's the idea that this should make it like a little mouth, like that. That's kind of the, that's what I've been thinking. And then I'll do like two little lines for a little nose and our eyes will be all weird and buggy. Let's see, let's see how this works. Pull this out. And then I'm just gonna go back into the piece under, ah, let's just use the needle for this part. Let's see how this goes. Go under the stitch here and pull this knot through. One, like that. It's not bad. Maybe we should have put that one stitch lower, but definitely isn't bad. We'll go two. I think it'll all come a little bit cleaner once I add the eyes and stuff too. You can kind of see what's going on here. Eyes will go here. There's our mouth. This is gonna like this is supposed to be like a big bottom lip, you know? And then we're gonna put nose here, and then if we want to put a tongue, it'll be going over this. Like that. So hopefully this works. We'll see. Um, I'm just gonna keep these ends of this yarn on the inside and then we'll work around them as we crochet this next round. Uh, this is a, from our center, right? Yeah. So I'll go ahead and cut this strand a little shorter. We don't need that one. And we'll keep going. Okay. So next round, I believe is just another round with increasing, yeah. So we can just start to work around. And when we get to this tail end, I'll start to work around it as I go to kind of lock this one into place. Oh, actually, you know what? Why don't we lock it into place and use it for our nose at the same time? That'll kind of cover two birds with one stone. One, two, three. I think it's four stitches and then our first increase right here. And that's where I'm going to start working around one of our two tail ends from our mouth. So there's one. There's our second increase there. Yeah, this could work. This totally could work. Do one more stitch here. Actually, you know what? We are gonna, I'll use a different green for the nose if I just choose to do the nose. Uh, that'll sim simplify things a little bit more too. Even though it'll be another piece that we need to sew on, I think it'll still be easier. Four five and then we've got our other tail end here that we could start to work around maybe six and then i think this is our next increase where we want to work around the tail one and two like that and i'll just work around the tail for one more or for the end of our round here just so i can keep it in place one and two we're also gonna have to figure out how to do the tail itself but I don't think that'll be too tough I mean honestly that doesn't look that bad as far as like a mouth goes that looks pretty good you know and then if we have like a even even if we just use one strand of yarn out and it's just like long I mean we might even be able to make it so you can pull the tongue out that would be kind of fun uh, let's I'm gonna add my eyes now even though I normally add my eyes later just because I really want to see what it looks like with its bug-eyed out. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I'll do one more round and then I'll add eyes. Hi, Akari. How are you? She's going to compete in the plant competition. Heck yes. Hawk yas. Okay. Let's keep going. Go one, because we had two at the end, right? Yeah, one, two. Okay, so this is just regular bonimal stuff at this point. Three, four. So the only real additions to this pattern are gonna be using a different color for the eyes, adding the little fin at the top before round two begins, and then making the lip. Uh, and then I guess adding the tail will also be its own thing. There we go. Five, six, 
six. Oh no, this is six. And then our other increase here. This is where one of the legs goes too. Cool, 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 cool. And then we'll do three more single crochets. One, two, and three. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, I guess that is good for the fin. It's not as finny. Well, actually, it's not that bad. It's looking a little chameleon-y. Especially once we add our nostrils and stuff. Okay, we'll do one more round, and then we'll try doing the face. One more round. This round is nice and easy, though. It's just single crochets. Double hooked bobble might be needed for the feet. A double hooked bobble? What is a double hooked bobble? I don't know if I've ever heard of a double hooked bobble before. Let's look that up. Let's see. Double hooked bobble. Search. Let's see. Images. Oh no, I'm just seeing regular bobble stitches into t double. Hmm. I think I get what you're saying though. I do have an idea of what we could do for the bobble stitches to make them more like hands like but I don't see any I've never heard of a double hooked bobble before so I don't really know what that is if you got any time to explain it uh, before we get there that would be helpful um Abigail hello how are you okay so we're coming to the end of this uh, center of a piece comes through what I get for pulling out of the center. It became a tangle. Do I know that you and Akari are sisters? Yes, I do. Yes, River. That's really cool, actually, that you guys are siblings and both into the channel. That's just dope. You just got home from work, Abigail? Well, I hope you had a wonderful day at work, and I hope that your the rest of your day is even more wonderful. Um, I believe this is our last single crochet right there. Okay. Um, and how am I? I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, actually. Nice, kind of a... Not like super chill day, but pretty chill. I still got work to do after this though. I gotta work on um, Sir Pro Gray's sea turtle pattern. Cause I wanna add pictures and stuff in it. So I've still gotta work on that after this. It's gonna be a lot, a lot of crocheting today, which is gonna be great. Um, oh, I guess I could or add horns, right? Because they do have horns, I believe. Okay, so first though, let's add our eyes. The good thing about adding these eyes is that they might get like really weird and like pointing in different directions, but that's great because that is very chameleon. I used to own chameleons actually. When I was a kid, I had chameleons and they gave birth. And there were these little baby chameleons in the thing. But then we had to give them away because my mom was like, you can't take care of a bunch of baby chameleons. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I was like, five or six it was reasonable it was a reasonable worry but I remember we had a giant cage it was like huge I mean it probably wasn't that big I was just a kid and so I thought it was big but I remember it being gigantic I don't remember why I wanted chameleons either 
I wonder if it was like something that I wanted or it was something that like my dad found a friend that was trying to get rid of chameleons. I don't know. There we go. Okay, so there's our eyes. Those look pretty chameleon-y. Um, Abigail. Oh yes, the spiked bobble. Yes, yes, that might work. That could totally work. Um, we do want some of this, some more of our green yarn here to use as a nose. Maybe we'll use actually a different color for the nose. Maybe that'll work. Let's try, let's try using some of our lighter green yarn. So we could use this for our nostrils. One, and then two. That'll be a little bit more clear. We could also use our forest green for our nostrils. One, and two, which would be interesting. Eh, I think we should use this one. Same color as the eyes. Hi, Samantha. How are you? Do I have a room just for crocheting? It's my office, so yes, kind of. It's for other stuff, too, but... I also play video games in here. It's kind of just for crocheting. Um, oh yeah, and someone asked the setup, the light box. Yes, we have, we're in a light box right now. Here, I'll zoom out. You can kind of see, you can kind of see the edges of the light box there. It is this big light box and then I have these backdrops for it. I sometimes wish this light box were bigger though because it's kind of hard to um, see the, uh, see crochet if I'm making if I'm making stuff that is like bigger it's hard to fit in here like I was doing the pattern for the bonsai tree and I was like there's like barely any room to show this bonsai tree off there we go we go down to here that Maybe. There we go. And let's look at how these nostrils look. I feel like these give it a much more chameleon-y feel. But maybe I should have done these in dark green. What do you think? Should I have gone dark green for these nostrils instead? I'm still feeling like this mouth should have been one round lower too, but I did what I did. Let's try what they what these would look like if I used a um, a darker green instead. Oh, that's weird. It's not coming out. Hmm. Let's pull it out from the other side. Oopsies. See, this is a little sugar and cream yarn. It breaks. Look at that. Ooh, what a mess. There we go. I mean, it's not terrible, terrible yarn. It's just like kind of annoying that it would break like that. I must have knotted in a weird way. It usually doesn't happen that bad though. It also might be just I'm using like older yarn. I don't know. Okay. Let's try this again with forest green yarn and see how that looks. Hi. Hey, you you I can't I always forget how to pronounce your name. Yves? Is it 16 by 16? Maybe. It's called a Foldio. That's the company I bought it from. All right, let's try these forest green instead. Right. Forest green is pretty good, especially if I add more forest green on the back. Oh no, I went around this. Oh no, I didn't, we're good. And then down to here. All right, let's try this. little bit there. okay what do we think about the forest green 
Not bad. Uh, let's add this, by the way. Let's see what it looks like with the tongue. We're doing a lot of experiments as we go here. I'm just doing a double knot at the end of the tongue so that I can pull it into the piece, but it won't be pulled out. And that way we can get an oopsies. Kind of messed that one up. Let's try it one more time. There we go. Okay, so we made this big, thick knot at the end there. Pull even tighter. Now we're just gonna cut the end of that so it's nice and short. And then I'll take this other end, cut it. And let's see how this tongue looks. I'm thinking we go off center, like right there, before I double knot these eyes together. And that'll be his tongue. Oh, that's actually, that's pretty good. I actually kind of do like the tongue like that. And then we might even make it so you can pull it back in like this and then pull it back out. That's a fun idea. We'll keep the tongue separate for right now, but I agree. I think forest green is the way to go. Let's do it. Let's officially do it. And call you Noah. Okay, Noah. Thank you. I would, oh, so you want to make a cube case for a three by three Rubik's cube. Um, I think probably your best way to do that might be by using granny squares. That could be a really cute little case and an easy way to make a bunch of squares. You just make a cube by sewing all the squares together. That could be kind of fun. See, if this mouth was a little lower, I think it would look more like a mouth, but you now it doesn't look bad. I'm just being picky. I'm just being picky. But this happens when you design something live, you know? Try to get picky. We are making a chameleon right now. Uh, we just finished our planet Earth, and we have a little bit of time left over, so we're trying to um, create a chameleon while we do it. Um, let's do, let's use the inside of our yarn here and try doing something for a, um, a tail. So I think the tail should be pretty easy. I'm just gonna do a slip knot like that. And then I'll chain a bunch. Let's, I don't know how many yet, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I actually think all we need to do for the tail is we can probably just slip stitch into each stitch across and that'll like just, it'll curl up itself. Um, and then if we need to, we can sew the curl in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do nine. Let's see if that gets curled up. How will that look? Nine. Let's do ten. Let's make an even ten. So we're gonna chain ten, and then I'm gonna work into the back loops of all these chains and just slip stitch all the way across. We're gonna skip that first chain, obviously. But then after that, we're gonna slip stitch into all the chains going across down actually you know what let's do this let's do a single crochet into the first chain so we're gonna chain 10 skip the first chain back loops only single crochet in the first chain and then slip stitch into the remainder of the chains and that's gonna give the end of our tail just a little bit thicker of a like grabby bit than the rest of it which might help it curl in a little bit too as an unintended side effect. Hey Clayton, welcome back. Yeah, we could try that, Abigail. That's not a bad idea. Try to pull the tongue right out of the center of the, the V in the mouth. Yeah, we could try that. All right. So this is shockingly a straight bit, which is not exactly what we wanted. We want it to be curled. So we'll probably end up curling it up like this and sewing it together so that it stays curled on the back of our tail when we sew it in. Actually, it does hold its shape really well, so maybe that'll work. Um, okay, so after I've done all those slip stitches, we're just gonna chain one at the end. We're gonna have a somewhat long end, like about that long. 
and just pull that all the way through and we're going to use these two ends to sew onto our body after we finish up our next uh actually our next two rounds of the crochet so that way his a little bit um it's a little bit longer before we sew the tail on because i'm not really sure where we want it on just yet okay so now i'm on to i believe our second to last round and this is the round where we're going to add our little feet so i'm going to try doing i'll try doing uh our spiked bobble stitches but we'll see i might because the spiked bobbles need to be like double like two little feet it might be kind of hard i have an idea though let's try something different though we're going to try our bobble stitch here and there's one and then in between this i'm going to chain let's chain two like that and i won't do our slip stitch so i'm not going to make it a spiked bobble i'm just going to chain two and then continue our bobble stitch and let's see what happens there's one and we should do two at a time so it'll be one two boom three now we'll do two in between so two i know i'm not making a whole bunch of sense just yet but let's see what happens first and then i'll explain let's see if this works and then we'll pull through all these stitches if it doesn't we'll just pull it back out so i'm kind of doing like well, that kind of worked kind of did what i wanted to see it makes like two little nubbles there but they're not as like not as pointy as a spiked bobble yeah that actually that kind of worked okay so let me explain that in this next stitch we're going to call these i don't know they're like in between a spiked bobble and a regular bobble stitch they look kind of cute see how they're like they got these two little nubs on them may help to look more chameleon -y. so how to do that is we're going to do it in the same places as we do our regular bobble stitches for our feet which is technically one stitch above like this and it starts as normal we're going to do just starting like with a regular bobble stitch how would a regular bobble would start like that and then oh see but one bummer is it's going to be like slightly angled outward, which is not really what we want. Let me do two. One, two, three. Okay, let's try that. One, I'll do it twice. And then I'll do my chain two. So doing a bobble stitch, doing the first two steps, chaining two, pulling tight, not slip stitching like you would for a spiked bobble. And then we'll do one more. And then another chain two. There's one, one, two. Wait, one, two, three. I have one more to do. Okay, so chain two, like that, and then do another last one here. Let's see what happens. Fun to experiment. Let's see what happens. Will this be clear? Will it be weird? Duh. One, two. Eh, that kind of worked. This time the bobble, the two little toes are a little closer together. Might not totally be what we're looking for, but it's not that bad. Let's try more. crochet a few more and then look at it ha ah, messed that up one two and three i'll do our next foot there okay let's look at what we got here i'm just going to kind of like poke our little nubs out a little bit so they're more nubby it works though i think it works there it gives more of like a little toe feel little toe beans there
Yeah, I think that kind of works. Yeah, okay, so here, let me do a full explanation of what that bobble stitch is. Um, we'll call it the, I don't know, double-toed bobble. I don't know. Um, okay, so it's going to be, in our next stitch, we're going to do it. Now, normally, I'd work a bobble stitch into the top of the stitch like this, but because this is our bottom wall, we want it one stitch up so that it looks more like a leg. So we're going to go into this stitch here. We start at normal. Um, with two steps of our bobble stitch. There's one and two. And then we're going to chain two. One, two. Pull that chain tighter and then work another step of our bobble stitch. And then we're going to do that chain two again. One, two pull it tighter and then do our last step of our bobble stitch go through two and then we're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook so we're just basically adding chain twos in between a few steps of our bobble stitches and it should give us a little bit just a bit of little toes two little toes there very they're very subtle but it does work and that's it that's what we're going to be doing for our little feet. It's going to be hard to explain that in the pattern, but it does add a little bit extra. See, and then it's important to like kind of poke it and pinch it once you're done with the bobble stitch so that they, the toes go into the position you want them to be in. They don't get like hidden on the inside of our bobble stitch. That's not bad. too bad and then when we add our tongue it'll all be together a little bit cleaner okay uh, one more leg here hi Leah how are you a douce bubble one and two look at us inventing stitches on a live stream how fun uh i'm gonna redo that second bobble second step of a bobble there we go and then do our chain two Ugh. there we go pull that a little tighter another step of bobble two Another chain two, one, two, pull a little tighter, and then our last step of bobble. Tough, but definitely not impossible. One, two, and then we pull through all of them. That. Poke and prod, get these little toe beans out there. And just keep going on. Ah. I think this would look pretty cute with just regular bobble stitches too. So I don't think you need to do these little toe things. But they are a fun little challenge to add. Make sure to poke them, pinch them. Yeah, that was fun. Good suggestion. Those look like little feet, right? Little grabbers, little grippers. What time is it here? It is 5.30 for me. I'm in California. I'm doing great, Leah. Thanks for asking. Um, okay, now I'm on my last, like I've done the majority of our piece. So now we can just start decreasing it down, I believe. Let's look at the pattern again. Single crochet 18, we did this round seven. So yeah, we're on round eight. So it's one single crochet and then an invisible decrease. Like that. 
Uh, and then after this round, we'll add our um, we'll add our tail. We can still double knot it on the inside. Yeah. One. And an invisible decrease. That's nice because it's also pulling the legs in a little bit, which is good. Toes aren't really looking the way I want them to, I'll be honest. Seems like kind of maybe a lot of work for a very subtle stitch, but hey, it's a, you know what? It's not bad, it's not bad. I'm, I'm just beating myself up. So we'll decrease here. I believe this will be the end Okay, cool. So now let's add our tail. The tail should be pretty easy to add. We'll go ahead and pull the top of the stitch through first. There's two ends here. We're just gonna go into two stitches uh, to make it adjacent with this uh, horn. So one and two, I think. Like that. One through there. Go two through here. And with the second one, I think we're going to come back up to where our first end was. Put that in there if I can. Come on. There we go. The yarn was being frustrating. Okay. Pull that through. One. Like. Uh, Okay, and that's going to get the tail technically in there, but we do want it to be wound up like this more. So I think all we need to do for that is we need to come out with this bottom one through where our top stitch was. Actually, we'll go through the adjacent stitch to the... No, no, we'll go through the top stitch. Yeah. Uh, and I really want to make sure that knot is pulled in there. Up, and then I'm just gonna curl it in. I'll pull this other tail so that the other tail end goes in too. Not bad. Okay, we're gonna curl it up a little bit more, and then I'm just gonna go through the very edge of this tail, just the very edge stitch, and then back in through the same place where it's coming out, and then back into the body. And I'll go ahead and go through out, actually out right here. Will this work? Will this work, we ask? It's not perfect. Actually, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. Um, I'm just going to use this tail end for one more part, which is going to be sewing in other part of the bottom of the tail because it's sticking out a little bit further than I want it to be. Pull that tight. Yeah, that totally worked. Yeah, that was good. Tail, tail, nice. Double knot this on the inside. One and two. <laughs> when am I going to do a snail? We will get to a snail eventually, I promise. Eventually. We might even do it in this season because, you know, snails work with plants. That's what they eat. Okay, so that's the majority of our piece is done. Um, let's mess with this tongue. See if we want to keep it sewn in or not. I, I am inclined to make this tongue so that it goes through the bottom of our piece too. And that way we can pull it out and pull it in. So it's like more of an interactive crochet pattern, but I don't know. 
Yeah, well, let's go ahead and save the tongue for once we're stone closed. So we got one more round here to do that. Just a round of all decreasing. Nice and easy. Well, kind of easy. Don't the tails turn under? Oh, I thought they turned over like that. Do they turn under like this? Oh shoot, you're right. No, no, they do both. Looks like the pictures do both. Some have them turning up, some have them turning down. I think it depends on what they're grabbing onto. But you could totally do this the other way around for sure, very easily. And I'm not undoing it at this point, so. In our case, it turns up. <laughs> three it's kind of hard to see what i'm doing but i'm just decreasing it invisible decreasing in each of the stitches yeah Five, one more. Nice. Okay, cut the yarn, pull it through. We'll stuff it. We need to add magnets. Obviously we can't forget about the magnets. Can I solve, wait, can I solve a Rubik's Cube and your record is five seconds? I cannot solve a Rubik's Cube. I've never done that before. Um, yeah, I'd have to practice a lot, but. Uh, you, Akari, I promise you, I'll make a snail eventually. There's a lot of requests for snails and I know, I know, I gotta get a snail made. I will, I promise. Just not just yet. But I will get there. We'll get a snail made eventually. I'm going and stuffing our piece up with all these little extra threads just to get rid of them. Hopefully it won't come back to bite us when we put the tongue in, but it should be fine. Um, I'll add just a little bit more stuffing, like seriously barely any though. Every day is Earth Day. I agree, Lachlan. I absolutely agree. It's actually technically not Earth Day today. Earth Day is on uh, the 24th, which I think is a Monday. Hey, you know what? That fin actually does work a lot better now that I look at it. I do like it. This guy is pretty cute. That's pretty cute. Okay, uh, magnets. Ooh, boy, was that close. I almost didn't add the magnets. I think I have extra magnets in here somewhere. There they are. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to add three magnets on the bottom instead of adding magnets to the top and bottom. First off, because I forgot the magnets on the top, but mostly because I really want this guy to have a super strong magnetic grip so that he can stick on to certain things because he's a chameleon and that's, you know, kind of part of the chameleon's dealio is that they grab onto things really easy. Fix those toes a little bit more. You can see, see this is this is the big difference between the lily sugar and cream and our new yarn. Is you see these little fuzzes here? That doesn't happen with our yarn. At least it doesn't happen as easy, I should say. I'm sure you can still get it to get fuzzy like that, but it's it kind of holds its the the fibers a lot better because they're wound so much. Just kind of a nice little nice little nod there. Okay, so let's sew our guy closed.
Uh, Lachlan, that's not Britney Spears. That you're singing. Uh, you're singing. Uh, not. Uh, that's. That's a. Pa 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 no, it can't be. All right, let's see how this tongue goes. We're gonna sew this tongue in. Uh, let's try right in the center of the mouth, like that. And we'll come out somewhere, we'll come out where the bum is, like this. I kind of think that the tongue should come out maybe from the side more. Instead of directly in the center. I feel like it'd look cuter if it came out the side of the face. What do we think? It looks kind of like a snake tongue with it coming straight out the middle like that. Kind of looks like a mistake. Uh -huh, I was right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yes, that was like a really popular song at my prom, actually. It was like that was when the song came out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you, Lachlan. Alright, there's our tongue. What do we think? Do we leave the tongue sticking out like this? Or do we make it so we can pull it out? Eh, let's, let's, let's just keep it sewn in, so that way we don't have to worry about it. Because if we leave it coming out like this, then it'll always be like sticking out a little bit. Which is no fun. So we'll just go ahead and knot it on the inside. Um, how are we going to do that, though? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess what we'll have to do is we'll have to go through like half a stitch here. On the inside somewhere. Like that. Yeah, that kind of hides it. I mean, you can still see it a little bit, but probably would have been easier to do earlier. Take out. And I think I might just double that up. Technically, it's not knotted in, not knotted, but it shouldn't come out, so it's knotted as well as we should, we need it to be. Squish, squish, and there's our little chameleon, our impromptu design along. Look at that, how fun. Hey guys, if this wasn't enough for you to donate to the World Wildlife Fund, then... Well, you should still donate. <laughs> Looks pretty good though. Little tongue there. And there's our little chameleon. What do we think, guys? Do we like our impromptu pattern? Let's see if it it should have a pretty strong grip. Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good strong chameleon grip. Nice. Alright. Well, Thank you guys so much for watching. Today we made a little planet Earth with a little heart where California is. Just say hi to me. And a little tiny chameleon as a bonus. Oh, look at that. He attaches to the keychain, which is great. Um, as, a, as an extra bonus, we made a tiny chameleon with our extra time today. Okay, next week we're going to be doing two more weeks of these live crochet along fundraisers. So if you would like to support in the future, Come back next week. We're going to be live next Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we're going to be making a brand new endangered creature. Um, we're going to be making Finn the Sea Turtle, one of Sir Pearl Grace patterns. But I'll be back next Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time. Make sure to like and subscribe down below. Hit the little bell icon so you don't miss when we come out with new live streams. And if this video gets enough likes, we're going to be doing a giveaway next live stream. We're looking for 150 likes. We're at 121. So if this video gets up to 150 likes by next live stream, we're going to do a giveaway for a Jimbo pin, our brand new Jimbo pins. So like this video, it only needs 30 more likes. That's like, you can totally do it. Um, okay. I think that's everything I wanted to say. 
Um, uh, oh, oh, right. If you want to get our new seasonal crochet kit that we started today, here you go. Look at that. Wow, beautiful. Here, I'll, I'll hold it up for us. Actually, you know what? Let's switch cameras. This will be perfect. Da, 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 da. There we go. If you'd like to get our seasonal crochet kits, they are out now for pre-order. Uh, pre-order now. Uh, annual kits, you'll get a lot more, and you'll get a super cool bonus pin in addition to your seasonal kit. And it's like the best way to support this channel. You all, it also comes with a full club crochet membership, so you get access to all of our patterns. And uh, yeah, great way to support the channel. So if you like what's going on here, you should do that. Or just create a club crochet membership. That's also a great way to support the channel. Um, thank you, Cooper, for adding that to the description there. Uh, they, it is in the comments right now if you want to help support and uh, get a seasonal kit. Um, okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Special thanks for Cooper for moderating today and also helping by writing down our little chameleon pattern. So I'll try to get it onto the website as soon as I can. And yeah, let me know if you got any other questions. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Um, let's just take another look. Look at our chameleon. So cute. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, and what should Akari crochet? I think Akari, you should crochet a an octopus. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now let's say bye by just staring at Jimbo's adorably fuzzy face for a while. Oh wait, wrong, wrong one. This is what we want to look at. There we go. Look at that cute boy. Wow. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. And oh my gosh. No, you hang up. Oh my god, stop. You're making me blush. Stop. No, you hang up first. Jimbo, tell him they need to hang up first. He's not even listening. He ain't even listening. Joanne! Check out that link that Cooper posted and you can learn everything about that giant kit. It's amazing. It's a incredible even. Or check out the link in the bio. Okay, let's go pet Jimbo and say bye. good boy what a good boy no you hang up first Cosmo okay bye